Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the long running but infrequent Paradox Interactive podcast. Uh, I'm Daniel Goldberg, Chief Marketing Officer at Paradox, and I'm here with my good friend and co host, uh, my spirit animal, Shams Trajani, <laughs> Chief Business Development Officer at Paradox Interactive. Uh, this, for those of you who do not know, is a podcast about the business of video games. Can you maybe explain, Shams, to all of our newfound listeners what the business of video games means? Yes. The whole point of this podcast is that when people look at the stuff we do and go, what the hell were those guys thinking? We all hopefully will be able to shed a little bit more light on the inner workings of the games industry and it's in particular Paradox Interactive. Yeah. Either share the plan, explain what we were thinking, or kind of fess up that we weren't thinking. It was yeah. just as stupid as it looked. Exactly. No, it's <laughs> like never confuse, uh, you know, a cons good conspiracy for just plain old incompetence. <laughs> like anyone who's a conspiracy uh, nut clearly has never worked in an organization consisting of more than eight people. It's just incompetency people. <laughs> Usually, yes. Exactly. So what's right. the topic? The of topic today? of today, the very topical topic of today is what happens when a C-level and a senior person leaves yeah, uh, a chief executive. A chief executive. Chief officer, I guess. A chief officer, leaves. yes. Uh, what does a that company. mean? What does that, what does that lead to? What is what the impact? Do? What's what, the impact how, on the business? Why? And, yeah. you know, it's it's not a normal departure. Uh, yeah. Or maybe it is. Who knows? Uh, so we're going to get into that. But before we do that, uh, let's let's get into the, the real fun of it, which is what have you been playing, Dan? Ah, uh, what have you been? What have you been playing? Uh, I have been playing. Um, I've actually. It's not a video game this time. I've spent most of the summer uh, painting Warhammer miniatures with my seven-year-old son. Mm, fantasy forty like, k. Forty k actually. Mm. He likes the space stuff more, uh, and it's not called fantasy anymore. I realized it's Age I, of Sigmar now. Yeah. yeah, I've had like a fifteen-year hiatus from the world of Warhammer, but I'm back into it. Okay. Uh, it's Age of Sigmar now these days, so, which everyone so... knows except for me. But you know, it was news to me. When I... So what are shop. you what are you playing? What, we haven't played it. We've just bought the miniatures, read the rules, and painted uh, a, uh, a squad of Space Marines and a squad of Necrons. Hmm. And next up is we're going to play. And it's been probably the highlight of the summer for me. Hmm. Bad um, summer, eh? It was great. It's like the dream. The you know the dream of becoming a father is like painting Warhammer miniatures with your kid. And now yeah. I, I've sort of lived that dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, it's, I it's also, actually also, also yeah, had the also, same highlight as a father. My daughter asked me, can we watch Star Trek together? So Nice. It's the same level, I, I guess. What I found, though, is that it's clear that I'm enjoying it more than my son. <laughs> so it's, it's slightly awkward because it's, it's I mean, seven-year-olds aren't that good at, like, hiding their feelings it's it's quite clear that he's doing it to be nice to me rather than doing it because he likes it but you know i'm i'm just i'm i'm willing to accept that <laughs> that's good that's good but uh, so just painting minis any any no video games you rave usually about some game pass some, um, some such yes yeah, so i played uh i actually played the quake remaster quite a bit last mm. week uh i'm absolutely loving that because i played a lot of quake back in the day and i'm really enjoying the, the sort of very careful way it's been remastered with most of the you know the original textures and what have you intact just upscaled mm -hmm. to, to 4k uh so that's really good i'm really enjoying that um went back into tetris effect a little bit but didn't really have the patience for it um I, not not that much gaming otherwise. I mean, we only get a few weeks of sunshine in Sweden every year, so we tr you know try to make the most of it. It's Magic the Gathering, of course. We can talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Really enjoying the new. Are set. you are you still silver? No, silver I'm League. actually gold now. Um, I'm not very good. I, I you know I'm I'm one of those players. I, I like to sort of. I don't like to play someone else's deck. I like to make my own deck up. Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. which means that usually the, the deck is just shit and I keep yeah. losing all the time. But at least I'm losing with something I made myself. Some dignity. You know? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> at least what you tell yourself. Dignity intact. No. So, but I'm actually, I'm, I've really enjoyed the latest set, um, uh, the, the, the Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms yeah. uh, tie-in, which is a really interesting collaboration as well, I think. Yeah. Which apparently has been quite successful. I read somewhere that this is one of the best-selling uh, magic sets of all time. Yeah, I think be. it's interesting. 
Uh, Happy to hear. What about you, Shams? What have you been playing? Oh man, I'm gonna start in, start in reverse order. I, mm -hmm. I've also played a lot of Magic, and I made it to Mythic. Thank nice. you very much. Well done. Did you make? The, did you? Is it your deck or is it? Absolutely not. Why would I even try my hand at failing suboptimal plays? I take the best deck and then I play it until it is yeah. not the best deck anymore. Yeah. My, the difference is I take the I take the best deck and then I, I tweak it to make it better. <laughs> exactly. I, better with yeah. uh, air quotes. Uh, yeah. running. Exactly. It's like taking, I think we talked about this. This is like yeah. buying a real expensive car, yeah. taking out the V8 and putting in a 1.2 Opel engine or something. In it. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, at least it's your car, right? Yes, exactly. It's my engine. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, I've been playing, and I want to talk ex extensively about this because this actually does relate back to our business and maybe mm -hmm. we can make a thing out of this. I've been playing two games. Um, Dyson Sphere program. I knew yeah. I would love it, but I finally caved. I've played, I checked now, Steam. I have 96 hours on record the past two weeks. Holy sh Wow. And, and I want to remind our listeners, I have a fairly high-powered day job as well, mm -hmm. and a wife and a family, and still I've mustered 96 hours. Uh, In the last Dyson, two weeks? The last two weeks. Is that even possible? I mean... Have you not it, slept? Was... No, but I've had a bit, a bit of vacation as well. Yeah, okay. You got to remember. That. And also remember the weekends, Daniel. And yeah. again, just okay. the one child, right? So yeah. oceans of time. Yeah. Um, Dyson Sphere program is one of the best paradox games. Not published ever. by Paradox. Yeah. Not published by Paradox. It's mm. it's made by a wonderful team in China, whom we're in contact with. So who knows? Uh, but it's it is virtually it's um, it's um, Factorio but on a much larger scale yep. and it just goes nuts on the logistics and optimization flow and it has an amazing late game and it has an amazing early game it is just so wonderful kim uh who's uh, uh who's played it extensively as well and it's in an amazing game and it's it just the, the, I can't talk about it enough, and it's an endless. I'm looking forward to restarting and build and playing it again. It's really one of those endless games. I think mm. it's really cool. I'm. Uh, it's still in early access. I just want them to get it out and start churning out DLC for it. I think it, it's an amazing thing to do. Is there any DLC uh, yet? No. Or is it... no, no, no. They kind of stuck to the whole early access, no DLC thing so right. far. Uh, but they're doing uh, updates at a fair pace. So if you like Paradox games but want to give somebody else Paradox money, try Dyson Sphere program. And of course, Fred will hate me for saying this, but he doesn't listen to the podcast, so it's it's a win win for. Uh, do you have a, Do you have a discount code that you want to share that gives us like a kickback of a few percent or something? Or? Uh, no, but try typing in a ten percent Dyson Sphere discount code and see just what happens. <laughs> and I don't know in which field, but just type it in like a Notepad and see if it just materializes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. Uh, the other game I've been playing is. And this one you should play, and it's two ninety nine. So I'm just going to buy it for you right away, uh, and so you can play it with your son. The game is called Snake RX, mm -hmm. or technically S N K R X. So okay. this is it's Snake, mm -hmm. the classic uh, 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 Deuce game, but with a twist. So you're familiar with the team fight tactics draft? Oh wow! Thing. I just looked this up now. I have yeah. I missed this. This so looks. Yeah, exactly so, like the thing I would love, actually. Yeah. So it, it, it's an, a kind of retro Amiga art style, which, yeah. you know, might suit some some folks. Uh, mm. But And then Snake in its core loop. Wow. But the thing is, it has progression and roguelike mechanics. So And this is why I really love it from a business perspective, because they've taken a tr tried and true core loop, and then they've added a super popular mechanic to it, which is a team fight draft mechanic. Yeah. So essentially, when you start playing the game, you just you choose one, uh, you know, instant cell of the snake body, and you choose between three classes, and it might be an archer, and the archer shoots every so other, uh, and then you every round that you finish a wave of killing enemies, instead of you know essentially catching the nibbling food, enemies come in wave wise, and when you kill them, you get to buy another class and then you draft these classes and the game becomes incredibly hard uh after a while and you can do new game plus new game plus two five i'm on, up until new game five and it's quite yeah. hard and it's one of those wonderful games it's made by a small brazilian team i believe uh they made it as a kind of a three-month thing and then it was wildly successful and they continue to doing it it's, it's 2.99 it is every game developer and business interested person owes themselves to try this out just from a 
I've never seen a better merging of hybrid mechanics. Uh, uh, and I think that this is, should, should be taught in classes uh, of a good example of how to merge stuff. It's, it's not, you know, it's, it's not uh, top 10 games of all time uh, by any means. It's, it's you play it for 15 minutes and then you have fun with it. But it's, we talk so often in Greenlight whenever we start new projects well, uh, to take two different type of games and marry them together. And sometimes it's a good marriage and sometimes it's, a, it's a, just a bastardization of a Frankenstein's monster. But this is really amazing how they put it together and it's continuously updated. And surprisingly enough, the soundtrack is one of the things that is the best thing about the game. Mm. So I, I can't gush enough about this game. So SNKRX. Snake RX, SNKRX. This is like this this uh, the, the the recommendation of the, of this week's episode then. I, I yeah. will definitely check this out. And $2.99. Uh, let me see how many hours I have of that game. I have 25 hours on record. It's a tiny game, but it's really amazing. So cool. that that's been my summer, and um, sounds like a good summer. I can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do we want to talk about what we what else we've done, or we just skip that? We just skip that. Ah, right? we can skip. <laughs> we we yeah. can come right. back to that. It's been a, it's been a long summer. All right. Let's get started. Okay. So let's talk about today's topic, which was what happens. When a C level, I mean somebody in the management suite, a chief business development officer, or a chief marketing officer, or a chief uh, uh, revenue officer, somebody leaves uh, the company. It's not necessarily the same thing as a regular person leaving the company, but there's a senior executive. So uh, this, I think, this has been a topic that's super interesting. We mentioned, mm -hmm. I think, earlier this spring that Julianne, our chief product officer, left us. Mm -hmm. um, and then we felt that there was a lot of good stuff to talk about on this topic. And then you and I were back and forth and like, how can we take it to the next level? Because mm -hmm. that is what we do on this podcast is business on the next level. Yeah. And that's why I'm so happy that you offered to kind of be a guinea pig. Yeah. For research purposes, uh, you fired me. And <laughs> I didn't even know I had the power, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, exactly. I've, um, uh, I've, I actually, I wasn't fired. I actually decided myself but i've uh, you resigned if, if it wasn't I've, clear I've, daniel has resigned the, the the traitorous bastard yes um that is true so it does become very topical because then yes. we can talk about what happens in the, in the wake of that monumental decision yeah. and i guess the, the the spoiler alert it's not as monumental <laughs> you know but <laughs> um yeah. yeah would you just very briefly just tell us like um uh, you don't need to go into the emotional turmoil of making the decision, but tell us where you're headed. Kind of give us a quick yeah. menu. So, yeah. So the reason I'm leaving is, of course, because of you. I've just kind of had <laughs> enough. And every, every, every man reaches a point where... <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's I've I've been with Paradox for five years, which is has been a, a a wonderful adventure, and I'm in, uh, infinitely grateful to everyone who sort of allowed me to be part of this amazing uh, journey. Um, I was I'm not leaving from something; I'm going to something. I was offered an opportunity to to work with something I've always wanted to do uh, with an organization I've adored and sort of followed for years, and I kind of came to the conclusion that I probably get one shot at this, and if I don't do it now, it's not going to come back. Um, and you're not getting any younger. No, I exactly. I'm also old and sort of spent. Old I don't have that much. <laughs> spent is so, a good way to describe you, actually. Yeah. It's, it's very, it's dead on. So I'm joining, it's outside of gaming. I'm joining an organization, a, a, a foundation called Norgen, which works with uh, um, helping entrepreneurs solve uh, the, the big challenges of the world. So sustainability and, and poverty and things like that. Somebody uh, described it as a Dharma Foundation, but less investment in uh, bioengineered sharks. A little bit like that, exactly, and more sort of investment into you know um, how can we how can we improve healthcare for the poor, or how can we okay. you know avoid climate disaster and things yeah. like that. Um, SCP Foundation is a good um, uh, reference point, I okay. think, as well. Uh, yeah. sort of the less, Dharma Foundation less... is the company in the Lost series. Uh, of course, the... I mean. Mm -hmm. Well, don't you know our listeners? We don't have to explain stuff like okay. that. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, yes. Okay. So, but it sounds like a dream job, and you've been uh, you've been very gracious in not rubbing our noses in the fact that you're going to make the world a better place, and we make the world a place. At that point. <laughs> so I appreciate that. But I know yeah. I, I've been talking about making a move, making that big move to to a, to a, you know the Gates Foundation or something, but I, you know, props to you. You actually did it and I, I will keep talking about it for another 13 years. So it's, uh, thank you. 
uh, it feels really good. And I, I will definitely come back knocking on your door, offering to, I don't know, wash your windows or clean your shoes or something at some point when this doesn't work out. But J Jokes on you, I don't wear shoes. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah. when will you be leaving us? Uh, uh, so this week is my last week. So I'm out next week. Um, but this has obviously been known internally for a while, for many, several months now. Yeah. Um, so um, all of the, you know, all of the pieces have been put in place uh, for my for my departure, which I think is what we should what we might, what might be interesting to talk yeah. about a little bit how that, how that works and how exactly. that how that process has kind of how that process works at paradox and what the sort of pitfalls yeah. are and yeah how we think about those things. So so let's let's talk about those. So talk, obviously, as a as a chief uh, marketing officer, a lot of the plans are if not in in set in direction by you at least at the very least approved by you hmm. so a lot of things are based on kind of your directions and stuff and now what happens in terms of uh, uh you know ending that and handing it over and you know m yeah. moving on well, i i think i would i would say that probably if if um and I would, uh, you know, you can discuss if it's the same for everyone, but I would argue this is even more s s true, the, 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 the more senior a role is. You know, what happens when a C-level leaves? I mean, if you've done the job properly, very little, I would mm. say. Uh, you know, if, if the succession planning has been done properly and if, if you know, the, the, the work that needs to go into planning has been done properly, it shouldn't really have an impact on the, on the business. Yeah. And, and the reason for that is at least I am a very strong believer in, that senior leaders should not be specialists. They should be generalists. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, you know, the, the, there's a need for di direction setting and vision setting, of course, but 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 the, the, there shouldn't be a there shouldn't be a, re a reliance on a particular set of skills or particular expertise with a very senior person uh, that 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 cannot be replaced or isn't already held by someone else in the organization. And that's how I would like to think. Paradox marketing has been built, not mm -hmm. because I've had a great master plan, but simply because there are many other people in the organization who are, uh, you know, much, much better than I am at, uh, at, at, at the sort of the art and the skill of marketing video games, right? Okay, so you're saying that the zombie body shambles on regardless of <laughs> what body part you knock off, and in this, uh, in this uh, case, the head. We put, we put quite a lot of work into succession planning in the management team over the past year or so, yeah. uh, I would say, both for my organization and for yours and for everyone else's. Shams and marketing mm. is, by, by headcount, quite a large part yeah. of the company, much larger than uh, the business development that you head up. Not saying that it's less important, it's just that it's more... Or more important, just that it's more people, right? Yeah. So, so uh, um, there there has been a, a a plan in place for quite a long while mm -hmm. uh, that sort of details what happens if someone leaves or if someone is you know hit by a bus or just disappears, mm -hmm. and then add to the fact that this has been quite a long time coming. This has been known for for several months, mm -hmm. um, and then also add, add add to that the fact that I was on parental leave for uh, the second half of last year, mm -hmm. so when I was away for six months. So, so the, m my part of the organization has been quite used to functioning without me for, mm -hmm. for quite a long time. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the immediate things that will happen is that my, 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 um, my, our very good colleague, Yuan Bolin, uh, is, is stepping up as the new chief marketing officer. Mm -hmm. Uh, so sort of assuming those duties from me, Yuan has been heading the sales and partner relations team at Paradox for the best part of five years. So mm -hmm. it's, sort of very well versed in how we operate and how we do things here. Um, and then beyond that, the the leadership team in my part of the organization remains the same, just I'm replaced by by someone else at the top, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'd like to think that the impact on the organization should be quite small, and I mm -hmm. hope it will be quite small, uh, largely because we've put the time and effort into actually thinking about this and planning yeah. for it. We'll have uh, we'll have Yuan come on in a couple of months, and he tells us uh, how how the cookie crumbled. Uh, yeah. uh, I think, the, but I think the really interesting thing is to think about on a, on a more long term perspective, where you know what kind of what kind of uh, background and expertise, and what kind of mindset a person brings to to their position, and how that influences the rest of the company. And that's mm -hmm. that's quite interesting because myself and Yuan are quite different. I'm I'm very much from a communications background. I'm I'm very interested in like uh 
you know, communications, branding, how you get a certain yeah. message across. You one comes from a much more of a sales background. So you want mm -hmm. strength is much more in sales, uh, partnerships. How do you actually drive revenue and results in business? And that's obviously something that will impact the sort of focus and the philosophy of the, the, the organization you want leads mm -hmm. going into the future. Uh, but that's not a surprise either. Surprise, surprise, right? No. That's that's really part of the thinking here. And that's part of the reason why I think Yuan is is a really good person to replace me yeah, or, yeah. or take this role on. Because if you look at how my part of the organization has grown over the past couple of years, um, I think it would do it would be probably be good for the Paradox Marketing Department um, to have much more to have those kind of values that you want embodies more top of mind going forward than perhaps over the past couple of years. Okay. That's not saying that, you know, that's not saying that any decisions have been wrong or anything like that. It's just that in terms of the next phase of the of the development of that part of the organization, it just makes sense, right? Okay. And well, I mean uh I completely agree with the fact that, you know, it's 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 not the it's obviously not the end of the world. And it's not like everything was resting solely on you. Uh, but there's also the factor of stability and some people become worried when some of these things happen and kind of how do you allay those fears? Do you just lean into the stuff that you just said now that uh, the, the, the structure and stability of the organization is not, you know, centered around one single person, but the processes and the collective, uh, you know, experiences and expertise or how do you kind of I'm sure people were kind of worried or thinking about what what now and you've had conversations with those people yeah maybe we should mention at this point also is that we are at a Swedish company and culture is quite different between different countries and uh, and it's it's not a run-of-the-mill thing in in necessarily in Sweden that people on sea level especially in Daniel's position leave left, right, and center. People don't get fired left, right, and center, certainly mm. in Sweden. Uh, so it does send some ripples, uh, but by and large, how would you kind of, any comments on that kind of, any worry? Yeah. I mean, partly it's what we talked about. It's it's about the structure and the process rather than the individual. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the other side of the coin is that, of, co of course, things like this lead to turmoil and nervousness and, and what have you, right? But that's just very natural. That's just the evolution of an organization and of a company. And I think yeah. Paradox is the kind of employer, I would like to think anyway, where we, this is this might sound a bit harsh, but this is also an opportunity for growth yeah. and for change for individuals in the organization, right? Yeah. Um, when, when things are, when things shake a little bit and things change, that's not, that's not something to 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 shy back from. That's something to lean into and see how this is. That can also mean very positive things for for you know you as an individual yeah. or, or you the team that you're leading or what have you. Because new opportunities will present themselves. New opportun opportunities for growth or development or or yeah. you know taking on new areas of responsibility and what have you. And I think I also try to encourage that kind of mindset with the people I, I speak to about mm. this. Um, but then also probably worth saying that. And this is, I think, common for for everyone in in a similar position. No one really tells me anything, you know. <laughs> I, I hear that people are uh, concerned, but mm. people very rarely speak directly. To they, they they're not crying openly in the office. No, and I think that, no, and and even if they do, they don't do it to me. And I think that also <laughs> sort of comes with the job. And yeah. just sort of foreseeing that is 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 very difficult. Um, I um having. Having been here for now almost 13 years, I've, I've seen a, a fair amount of senior people come and go. And my perspective on this, and this might sound a little bit weird, is that, you know, sometimes you have good managers or senior people come uh, and go, and sometimes they're not necessarily the, the greatest. Uh, regardless, when that change happened, it is kind of like you pull the plug uh, and uh, out of a number of blocked passages that allow change to happen. Okay, and to, to put exactly. it in the right way, when we have something who's who's good like you, we get kind of best of both worlds. Um, all the good stuff that you've you've have been your strong suits that have been uh, beneficial to the organization, those have been will propagate and stay within the organization because you've taught that on, you set routines, and everyone understands that. There are also parts of your leadership or my leadership, how it is that might not necessarily be 
the best parts of how we do stuff. There's like everyone has those sites. Mm. So whenever when you do leave, I think that your best parts will latch on. People will continue and take on from those things. And there will be also an opportunity to take on here are the things that Daniel didn't do or one of his weak spots, and we will be able to build upon that and make it stronger. And of course, when somebody, uh, when there's leadership that has been more problematic or really it hasn't worked, there's an even bigger kind of vacuum where you can fill out with better quality and stuff. Uh, I don't think it's a back, weird backhanded way of saying that we'll, we'll take the best from you and uh, uh, overcome your weaknesses. But I, I think it's a, just a natural part of progressing. I completely agree. And I think especially in a, in a, in a very fast moving and ever changing industry like ours, I think it's probably healthy to have a fairly fa not high turnover but you know to have turnover in senior leadership too because it yeah. brings as you say it, it opens up those blockers that might start to exist otherwise it, yeah. it allows you to identify blind spots that another person might be well more well yeah, suited yeah. to see and it just brings sort of fresh energy and fresh perspectives to things right yeah so i think it's it's probably a uh you know not, not necessarily talking about myself or, or or anything like that but but just a healthy change and healthy turnover in, in mm. senior leadership i think is a very good thing yeah and uh, the corollary to this is and i can speak more more about this is that what it does however which i don't like uh is uh because i mostly find you competent and a, a power of good is that <laughs> Uh, is one thing within your organization. Have you built that up? It's another thing in the management team. And, you know, maybe Eva could speak to this, but uh, I, depending on how outspoken you are and you are fairly outspoken, that is something I feel will, will change the dynamics quite a bit in the management team. Uh, and that doesn't mean that it's going to change for the worse, but like when you're a smaller team of, well, what are we, eight people in the management team, one eighth leaving does have a quite a bit of an effect on the dynamics. And again, I think it's, it's all about leaning into that again and, and try to, um, you know, be bold yeah, enough to I agree with that. Talk. That's probably the forum where, where a change like this will be noticeable the most, both in the yeah. short and the long term, because as you say, it's a smaller group of people where everyone's opinion and everyone's perspective has a larger impact. Yeah. Um, than 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 in the rest of the organization. So I, I completely agree with that, but I, I, I do, which I think is what you're saying. I do still think that in the long run, it's a healthy yeah. and good thing for a for a company that you know that change happens fairly frequently to bring in new perspectives and bring in new energy. And particularly you know. for a company that grows this fast, it is yeah. genuinely it's generally rare to be able to uh, grow with the challenges of a company that is growing. Uh, I kind of ask myself every eighteen months. If I look back and I'm not kind of embarrassed of my performance it's probably time for me to move on. I've been close to that a couple of times. <laughs> uh, but again, I have a lot of people whispering in my ear, it's time to move on. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, but let me ask you something more uh, light. Uh, how quickly does one turn into a lame duck? Uh, Pretty quickly. <laughs> and do you want to explain this? Uh, we have lame duck sessions or lame duck presidents, but lame duck CMOs. Could you yeah. explain what does this mean in, in practice? You announced that you're leaving. So uh, you announced that you're leaving and then you get like a lot of messages saying oh my god what a shame how will this company ever you know will never be the same without you i'm gonna miss you so much and then after about two days that dries up and then <laughs> you kind of immediately realize that you're not being invited to any meetings anymore there's a lot of decisions being made without you being either consulted or asked to to you know to make the call and it just kind of it just moves on it just things just continue to happen without you and it's a very very strange feeling uh but also quite rewarding and quite heartening it just goes back to what we spoke about previously you know okay it, things do not stop things continue on and people step up and immediately realize that i don't i don't have to this thing that I want to pitch and this thing that I want to do, I don't have to go through this guy anymore. I can just do it or go speak to the other person, you know? So that's that's a very rapid and quite shocking process, actually, how, quite, how quick that goes. Um, yeah, so, it's kind of yeah. going, like going to your own funeral very, very and realizing experience. nobody's yeah. sad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, fantastic. Uh, okay. Um, well, I mean, fantastic. We don't need to make a, a, a big fuss out of this. I'd love to have you on sometime in the future. To, to as a paradox alumni and hear what life is on the other side. Uh, uh, but honestly, maybe to get your kind of perspective, 
I, like you'll probably ping me and ask me what the fuck are you guys doing with this what's, what's going on with this <laughs> yeah. but to kind of get your perspective on that uh would be fun yeah at some point absolutely um so ex i'm happy for you excited that you're moving on and i'm really also happy that you're leaving uh, a uh, rock solid organization uh with the best parts of you and now that they have given the chance to shed the uh, the uh, heavy skin as well from you so they move on refreshment thanks man i'm gonna it's miss gonna this place good. a lot i'm gonna miss you okay. okay what happens to the podcast uh, so what we're going to do with the podcast is that we're going to continue. The show must go on, uh, much like the Jeopardy tryouts. <laughs> we're going to have. Uh, I'm going to be joined by a guest host, um, who we, whom we'll announce uh, for the ne next uh, podcast episode, and yep. uh, uh, work a little bit, and then we're going to see what we do with the format. We have a lot of people who want to come to the podcast and talk about what's near and dear to their hearts. So we're going to have some tech people come talk about Clausewitz and engines, and we're talking about the business impact there. And then we're going to continue with kind of interviews and inside out perspective and kind of unpack stuff as they unfold. Uh, I'm fairly sure we've had a fairly uh, eventful. Uh, six, seven, eight months of the year so far, and I yes. have a feeling they're nowhere near uh, finished. To put very true. So what you've got? This is like we're an, today's the pre-announcement. We're teasing the yeah. new podcast host to be announced at a later date. TBA. Uh, there will be a series of Easter egg hunts uh, <laughs> to chase the the like the zodiac style. Well. No yeah. zodiac style finding who. <laughs> might or not be a lot of red herrings yeah. uh, because we know how invested our, our two listeners are An expensive uh, cgi trailer <laughs> exactly and we probably won't end up using it as well uh, yeah. thank you very much daniel yeah, yeah. okay uh <laughs> good <laughs> let's let's leave it that do you want to close out it's your last time god the pressure um yeah maybe i should yeah i'll do i'll do the normal one uh, that's it for, for this week's episode of the Paradox Podcast, the podcast about the business of the video games industry with me, Daniel Goldberg, and you, Shamstra Johnny. As always, click that like and subscribe button. And if you want to talk to us, we're on social media and we're on the Paradox forums. So get in touch and let us know what we should be talking about in the next episode, which I won't be in, but Shams will be here with the next, the new, the new Daniel to be announced at a later date. That's all right. That yeah, works. That's all right. Great. Okay. Thanks, Have everyone. a good one, Daniel. Cheers. Bye-bye.